The material department was started a very long time ago, about 150 years. It grew out of the Royal School of Mines and then it involved geology and then it morphed into a department of material science and engineering. I love the diversity of the subject. There is no product you can buy in a market that isn't made of materials, be that from a airplane to a simple children's toy. It's extremely important for us to have access to state-of-the-art equipment because only by probing the atomic structure and the molecular structure of materials can we really figure out how things work. As well as understanding microstructure, you have to understand the chemistry and you've also got to understand the fundamental physics to understand materials. Even our most fundamental research is backed by industry and looks at real-world problems. It's always gearing ourselves towards the applications of materials in new products, new devices. Imperial is a fantastic place to do interdisciplinary work and it's generally at the interfaces between disciplines that we see the really interesting ideas emerging. The fundamental science and engineering that we do in our department is a huge interest to industry. There is a symbiotic relationship between industry and the university. We want to produce world-leading students who can become world leaders in the discipline and industry obviously wants to employ them. Postdocs and PhD students, we're talking about the transfer of knowledge as well and the associated knowledge. Industry benefits from working with academia because they gain a more fundamental understanding of their products. They can be more agile as things develop, as the marketplace changes or as science advances. So what we're doing now is setting the uh, seeds for future technologies. And so what that means is that uh, a number of companies that work with us are interested in getting in at an early stage so that they can be part of this discovery process. And that's why our industrial partners are keen to work with us in order that they can achieve competitive advantage for the future. How we achieve the breakthroughs is basically by getting into the lab and doing experiments. And so we have made really huge investments in state-of-the-art equipment. We actually don't have instruments in which an academic is not invested in developing. So if you want to push what you can do with those instruments, you need people who are world leaders in using those instruments. I love being an educator and I love talking to students and seeing them be inspired by the potential of materials and how they can affect people's lives. Over the last few years we've seen a resurgence of interest in material science at government level which really underline the importance of material science and engineering. For us at Imperial we really want to capitalise on this enormous interest worldwide in materials. It's an interesting area for funding, it's an interesting area for anybody who wants to make a difference. Because if you do materials science and engineering, you make a difference.